So for those contractors out there who price a lot of lump sum contracts, you know that having that effective system to compile your tender price can have a huge impact on the on the amount and the quality of tenders that you're actually able to submit. And, and you'll know this is the machine that, that drives your company's revenue. So if you don't tender enough, then you won't have work. And if you tender inaccurately, well, you know you'll soon be out of business. So how can you actually use a system that allows you to tender quickly and accurately on these projects without it costing you an arm or a leg? So hi guys, I'm Quibus. And today I'm going to show you how you can actually set up your MS project in your construction company to do the work of those expensive systems. Uh, before we start, before I start the video, make sure that you subscribe to this channel. I regularly share these very practical advice and tips for free, especially on MS Project and especially for the contractors out there. Um, so there are obviously great systems out there. As you'll know, you've got the CCS Candy Build Smart, you've got uh, Sage Estimating, there's uh, Estocom, Co-Construct, etc. All these software provide you with uh, quite an expensive estimating option uh, for contractors and, and not all of them are always suitable for lump sum type contracts where you have to almost set up your own bill of quantities um, and that's what i like about ms project i think it's a very versatile and actually accessible piece of software uh, and specifically for small to medium medium contractors you know once you move into the big leagues and, and you move into more uh, bill of quantity based uh, tenders then it'll it'll obviously pay to get a more robust system um but in my view ms project is very capable up to up you know for quite a long a long time in your company right so let's look at the process uh, of actually doing this in ms project the first step is simply to set up your resource sheet now um, for the international guys i'm using the south african rand here which is if you just want to do a quick conversion, just divide it by 10. That's going to give you uh, close enough to, to, to get an idea of the, of, the, of the rates here. So the beauty of this is that, guys, you set this up once. Once you've got your resource sheet set up, you can actually save that. And I'll show you in, in other videos in future how you can use the resources that you've set up in other schedules as well to do the estimating. So don't think that this is an exercise that you do have to do each and every time. You do it once and then it's there. And you'll see what I've done is I've simply brought in equipment type resources. I've got uh, overhead type, which we call PNG. I've got material type resources and even a few subcontractors thrown in there just, just for, uh, for the sake of the exercise. All right, so let's look at a few that you can just get a feel for it. So in equipment, I've got a, a TLB or a backhoe loader that's costing me about 340 rands per hour. Uh, then I've got a few, let's call it, okay, let's go for pipe material here. So it's a, it's a material rate per meter and it's costing me 850 rand per meter. I've got some overhead items over here that runs per month. Um, we've got labor again in terms of general labor, skilled labor. I've got uh, very detailed cement, sand, shut apply i've got a pump here that i need to install and then also subcontractor rates so let's say that's the cost of the subcontractor to install the complete electrical installation uh, on the project that they measured so in future if you get a new project i'm going to use the same resource sheet that i've created in ms project and i'm simply going to change my rates to whatever is relevant at the time so if my cement or stock bricks uh, if they are costing me 200 Rand, then I'll simply just adjust it here and it'll be adjusted throughout my whole estimate. Right. So once I've done this second step is to set up my Gantt chart. So if we go to the Gantt chart view here, let me just close that for a moment that you can see what I did. So not a difficult schedule to, to set up. The only thing that you need to add if you want to do a an estimate is to have some sort of an overhead costing activity, which is where I can price all my overhead costs, like the site office, etc. And then also you'll see here I've got all my laying of the pipe sections divided into 200 meter sections. So not a difficult schedule. I've got a pump room down here that I've scheduled, you know, very high level and, and 
simple and then i've got the installation of the manholes and the final connections here right at the end so quite a simple schedule hopefully uh, and let's look at the activities now so if we take the laying of the pipe section and this is one of those pro tips that i always give the young schedulers is focus on that laying of the pipe section in detail finish it up in terms of days resources links and everything and then you can simply copy and paste that down into your other section so you do the work once and then the same thing will apply to all the other sections so it looks like a uh, you know mid-sized schedule but it's actually not a lot of work if you simply focus on one section at a time so if we focus on this section over here the laying of the pipe zero to 200 that excavation what i've done there is to simply allocate my resources on it so i've got one tlb there two operators uh, two general laborers as well as a tipper and the cost is already compiled because the production rate is the four days duration there so it takes my tlb and it simply applies the the production to it the same with bidding so if you go to bidding or laying of the pipes you'll see again i use the tlb i've got one operator there I've got 200 meters of pipe material that's costing me 170,000. And then I've got four laborers over there to assist. So very simple. Uh, testing and backfill. I think I've just got a skilled laborer there. Backfill and compact again, the TLB, a compactor, an operator and some labor. And that all now, if you open up the cost column or the cost field in MS project, you'll see that's how I compile them that uh, cost for the section of pipe and as i copy and paste that and i do the loading of the other items it all tallies up to a big total there on top let me just show you what i did with the overhead costing activity as well so i've allocated my site agent over there site offices uh, for three months site toilets three months uh, establishment of equipment i've got three pieces of equipment i need to establish and de-establish again uh, so you can list all those resources on that item and that's the total cost for the overheads and it and then it all tallies up to that 2.5 million for my project and again the beauty of this is is the same as with my resource creation guys if you are a contractor who does a lot of projects like this then once you've done a schedule you know your, your your next project will be quite similar and you can start building up these scheduled templates for yourself that you can reuse on numerous projects in the future as well so again don't think that this is a lot of work um, this is really not a lot of work the software is doing all the hard yards for me in calculating these costs i simply set up a resource sheet i did my schedule and i assigned resources to these activities um, it's really not a big exercise to do. And now the second advantage of this is that we've got access to a massive amount of information in, in setting up this estimate. So if I go to my task usage, for instance, you'll see there I've got my cash flow forecast for this project immediately and automatically calculated by the software. And if I open it up, you can go and delve into the nitty gritty details of each and every activity that's been allocated with your cost on that specific item. And then you can spread it over the months here, or you can even go to a daily view and go and see what's going to happen on a specific week or day and what's the amount that you're going to spend. So you can see the cash flow is divided down into the minuscule detail that you probably will never need to go into. But there's my cash flow and as i start updating the schedule now in future this will automatically be adjusted as well and that now becomes my lump sum tender price 2.5 million and you can see it's very well thought through it's very well uh, uh, structured in my schedule and then also as i as i mentioned in future you can reuse your resource sheet and simply adjust the rates once i adjust the rate over here it'll filter through to my uh, let's do that it'll filter through to my gantt chart view or the task usage and it'll change there's my 
the change now is now 2.35 million due to that change that I just made. Great, it's as simple as that. Uh, I hope you found some value in this video. I think one of the questions that I get a lot from contractors is, yes, but I would like to enter in a different rate now. This is my cost, but I need to also display my cost uh, allowable with profit and then also maybe a selling rate that includes uh, some tax or VAT that you need to add. And I know a lot of the scheduling softwares have got three or four types of rates. You can certainly do that in Microsoft Project. I've got a separate video that I'll share with you where you have, can, can have a look at the different cost rates and how to insert a cost rate that will basically take care of, your, of the different cost types that you might have uh, or the rates that you want to, to display. Have a look at our channel. That video will already be loaded up for you.